Jack-O-Lantern, from Spooky, Maryland, retold by S. E. Schlosser. After a long day of unlucky hunting, I found myself stuck in the middle of the marshlands for the night, without a flashlight or a lantern to guide my stumbling steps, so I settled beside a fallen log to rest until daylight. As I tossed and turned, I recalled the story my great-uncle told me about the ghosts that haunted the marshlands. There was once a man named Jack who was a nasty fellow. He beat his wife and kids and was an all-around bad chap. So the devil came and hauled Jack away with him. On their way to hell, they passed a great big tree full of apples, and Jack asked the devil if they could get some of the fruit for a snack. The devil agreed, so Jack gave the devil a lift into the branches. Once the devil was up in the tree, Jack whipped out his jackknife and carved a cross in the bark so he couldn't come down. Jack wouldn't let the devil down until he promised to never come after him again. Then Jack rubbed out the cross and the devil was free. The devil stomped off without another word, and Jack could do as he pleased from then on. Well, Jack got worse and worse as the years rolled by, but finally Jack's body got so wore out that he died. He went up to heaven, but St. Peter refused to let such a wretched fellow in. Then he went to hell, but the devil barred the door as soon as he saw Jack coming and wouldn't let him in either. Go away and don't come back, the devil told Jack. How am I supposed to get back in the dark, Jack grumbled. Give me a lantern. So the devil threw a chunk of molten fire out to Jack, who took it for his lantern and went back to earth, where he wanders forever through the swamps and marshlands of the earth, a bitter spirit whose only delight was in luring the unwary to their doom with his lamp. Anyhow, that's the story my great uncle told me when I was a kid. At this juncture in my musings, I happened to look out over the marshes and noticed a blinking light in the fog. Is that you, Jack-o'-lantern? I called jovially. Jack. Jack, Jack. A voice whispered back at me from the fog. I was seriously spooked. I clutched my gun to my chest, the hairs on my arms standing on end. Had that been an echo of my voice, or was someone out here with me? Who's there? I shouted, trying to sound brave and menacing. I waved my gun around. Show yourself. Jack. Jack, Jack. The voice hissed from a completely different section of the swamp. A light blinked on, and then off. On, and then off. Shudders ran up my spine at the sound of that ghastly voice coming from nowhere. I huddled up against the log, wanting something firm at my back. Suddenly the story of Jack-o'-lantern didn't seem so funny. After all, this was a man who had outwitted the devil, and whose bitterness at being cast out of both heaven and hell caused him to lure the unwary to their deaths. Nonsense! And hokum, of course! But it didn't seem like it here in the chill dark, with the wind whispering through the grass and the fog obscuring everything from view except a strange blinking light that wouldn't stay put. My heart was pounding so hard it made my chest hurt. I strained my ears in the silence that fell over the swamp. I couldn't hear anything. No croaking frogs, no buzzing insects, no swish of owl wings. The silence was uncanny. Jack! 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 The voice hissed from somewhere to my left this time. The light blinked on, off, on. I counted ten heartbeats this time before it went out. The voice sounded closer. I held very still, my instinct screaming at me to hold my breath and not move until the menace had passed. Time enough tomorrow to laugh at my foolishness if this was just some hunter's prank. For now, best to stay safe, huddled with my back against the rotting log, the smell of the swamp stinging my nose. The voice came again, far off to the right. Jack! Jack, Jack! It hissed. The light came on. Off. On. Off. It's moving away, I thought, relaxing just a bit, feeling safer. There was a long, long Long silence. Nothing stirred. Not the wind in the grass. Not the frogs or turtles in the water. Not the crickets or night insects. Not even a bat on the wing. Jack! Jack, Jack. The voice hissed softly right into my ear. And I looked up into the glowing red eyes and twisted face of the jack-o'-lantern. I screamed and lashed out at it with my gun and ran a few steps. I tripped and fell over, knocking my head on a sharp stone. For a moment I saw stars and felt blood pouring from my scalp. But the jack-o'-lantern was right behind me. My only thought was to get away. I rolled and fell into the deep pool that had almost trapped me before. I plunged underneath the water, flailing desperately against rope-like grasses that tried to keep me me down. My head finally burst out of the water, and I gasped desperately for air, treading water as best I could with my trembling limbs and aching head. 
I heard the creature laugh in the mist. Jack! Jack, Jack! The voice hissed delightedly, and the light blinked on, off, on, right over my head, blinding my dazed eyes as horror flooded through me and froze my limbs so I could no longer swim. For a long moment, the grotesque face and red eyes of the jack-o'-lantern loomed out of the mist before my petrified gaze. My head started to swim with pain, and my cut bled more freely. The evil face above me, lit by its bright light, whirled around and around, growing dimmer as my eyes started to glaze. I was vaguely aware that I should keep swimming, keep trying to make my way to the edge of the pool, but the effort was too much for my suddenly heavy limbs. I barely noticed myself plunging down and down into the watery depths of the pool, too stunned by my injury to fight my way to the surface a second time. Then there was only darkness and silence and a voice hissing in cold triumph. Jack! Jack, Jack! 